Hey guys, Thunder here. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about a pretty popular topic, and that is gem spending. Um, especially as new players, or players that don't have a lot of gems, um, usually get a lot of questions around like, well, what can I do with those gems? What is effective uh, to spend those gems on, and uh, what is recommended? Now I want to preface this that with any time spending comes up, um, a lot of this comes down to personal opinions uh, for how much to spend, what to spend, if you buy gems, if you don't. Um, so this is an opinionated stance. Um, you'll hear similar advice from a lot of the community when it comes to newer players starting off. Um, and this is typically going to apply mostly to that category for um, the newer players trying to really get into the game and make the most out of their gems that they're getting when playing Questland. So moving in um, to gems, the one thing to note um, specifically for newer players is when you're looking at the campaign, you're typically looking at uh, three starring every level um, in a given location. So in the palace, if you three star every level here, or stage as they're called, you can get gems. So you'll get a couple of gems from playing um, and actually just going through the campaign. Now what to do with those, there's a couple of things that are really important. Um, the first thing to look at is going to be the talent call. Uh, so this is in the big old grand event blimp. Let's actually show it again, the big old grand event blimp. And uh, we're actually just going to scroll down on the bottom here until we come over to the event call, which is all about talents. Right? Um, and there's a promoted chance um, on one talent. So no matter what I draw, I'm going to get this one talent here. Um, so this is what they call the promoted talent. It's guaranteed. Um, and we can see that if we go into, I think it's here. Whoops. No, hold on. Actually, no, that had it too. Right? Uh, so you're going to get a guaranteed promoted talent. Right? And that's going to be the one they're displaying here. Uh, so this resets twice a week. Um, and you always want to come in here, and if you do not have this talent, you would like to buy a single copy in the first round here, if we show this again. Uh, actually, it doesn't show it there. Show it here? No. All right, well, it doesn't show it, but uh, at first they start off at 500 gems, which is a very good price to get something uh, that uh, is a new talent. Uh, the other thing I do want to show is in here in this rewards list. Um, now, I have all these unlocked, but if you don't, uh, you'll see something like this, um, which is a certain number of stars. And this one I'll talk about in a second. Um, but you'll see a couple of different stars. Stars are actually uh, earned from the campaign. Like I talked about three starring a level. Um, the number of stars you have in the campaign will unlock certain talents uh, that you can actually get. Uh, so any talents that you have enough stars for will be kind of highlighted with this color because you have enough stars. Uh, if you happen to see this, which is the Vicious Ivy talent, and it has this crazy stars on it, and you haven't gotten it after you've leveled up a good bit, um, it's actually because there is a quest for new players uh, when you're starting out. Um, and it teaches you how to use intensity. Uh, and you get this talent as part of that quest. Uh, that being said, if you do not have a copy of this talent, all you have to do is message support, and they will send you a copy of this talent. Just calling that out, because this gets quite a few people. Uh, but you'll be able to see what talents are available, right? Uh, if I have, let's say, stars, so all the top ones above this were unlocked, well, then I could only get this when I roll through those. So if you see a talent here you don't own for 500 gems, always a good purchase. Um, this is definitely something you want to do constantly as a new player. Look to build up um, all your talents until you get all the different talents you don't own yet. Um, another really good thing for new players, and this is specifically on uh, coming in for the grand event again, is this Wheel of Fate. Um, now, most of the time you're going to avoid this um, as a newer player, except for this first section right here, um, where we have this item here. Now this item is nothing in particular amazing that we care about. But these this first tier item is 25 spins, 
which works out to be 10,000 gems. You make sure you want to save up a couple of those gems, right? Um, and you can actually get some of the really, really important item passives on these weapons here. So if you get 10k gems and you come in here, you might find something with Mighty Magic, um, which is when you use four blue, you automatically use one red, which is a very, very popular shield. Or you might see a support uh, for destroyers, which is the reverse, which is when you use uh, four red, you're going to trigger one white. Uh, also, an incredibly popular shield used in builds. So you want to pick those up because it'll help you get started early. Uh, it's also not too uncommon to find the Granny's Blue Broth item. So you normally see like a Hulk or something up here, uh, which is whenever you heal, you gain two blue spirits. Also really, really good. Uh, you could also find a Ratchet Hatchet potentially in here, which is, I believe, Red Blast Blue Twist, which is when you use for red, you automatically use one blue. All these weapons where you use for red, then you trigger one, of a color, um, or use four of anything, trigger one of a color, except typically white, are very, very useful and are very popular in builds. So you want to come in here and check this. Uh, this changes uh, about, was it three times per week? Um, so keep an eye on it. Um, it doesn't always have a weapon, doesn't always have a good weapon, but it's a really, really good way of getting a strong weapon early um, that's going to help you clear through that campaign pretty quickly. So highly advised. Now the last thing about gems is actually going to be over in the marketplace. And this is what I would say is after you've gotten those weapons you need, once you're feeling pretty good with your talents and you have a little bit of extra gems. All right, and we're going to be looking at a couple of things in here. There's three major events in Questland uh, that kind of drive resource consumption. Uh, you're going to care about schemes, Eternal Keys and Spin Tokens. The last event is idle, but there's nothing you can really prep resource-wise for that. Uh, so what you want to actually do is focus on Eternal Keys. And this is, this is very opinionated, but Eternal Keys are a really, really good event. They tend to have really, really good rewards. And usually they have some of the latest and greatest meta, most popular and strongest weapons. In addition to that, they'll give you a ton of blue and purple or rare and epic items, which when you smelt them can give you a bunch of points in quest events, which could help you get some modern or cool pieces of gear. And it will give you a bunch of extra Eternium and Empowering Stones when you're starting out. So Eternal Keys are really, really good early on. Not that they get worse later, but they are incredibly powerful. So I'd say if you have um, kind of your build set up and you're moving along pretty good uh, and you have your talents kind of sorted for the most part, putting extra gems you earn here to get these eternal keys is actually really smart. Um, and I would definitely recommend taking a look at that because uh, it will let you score higher up on those events much, much earlier than if you had to earn all of the Eternal Keys from scratch. So some free gems here could really get you maybe um, a Hecatumbus or potentially like a Malicite Truncheon or what, whatever the latest, strongest weapons are. Um, buying these extra keys with your gems can really, really help get your gear leveled up uh, and get you those strong weapons. So definitely something to take a look at. Um, just because we are here, we will talk about schemes. Schemes are also a really good, um, really good um, thing you could buy here as an alternative to the Eternal Keys. Uh, the reason I don't typically recommend them is while you could get a lot of legendaries, they're not the most impactful thing early on. Um, but if you want to potentially uh, go uh, and farm out um, a particular set or something like that. Schemes are really, really good for that. So they're definitely worth considering as a secondary option. Um, spin tokens are that third event. Uh, I personally think that this is too expensive for spin tokens. Um, they're not too hard to get from events inside the game. Um, and your rewards really aren't going to be that huge. So I wouldn't buy these. Not that you can't. If you see that there's always a weapon you want and it's on spin tokens and you're having trouble building them up, 
this could work. Um, but normally when you're looking at spin tokens, the reward pools just aren't that good because what you're really looking at is over here in the tavern, this spin wheel. So I'm spending 700 gems and the best I can get is an epic, a key, few gems. There's nothing incredible on here. And this, this item is just impossible to get. And then when you do finally get it, it's not all that incredible. Um, so I wouldn't <laughs> pray for that by any means. Um, so de definitely don't focus spins unless you really, really need them for something. All right. With that, I am going to wrap up this wonderful guide on gem spending. I hope this helps you out with your questing adventures, and I wish you a bunch of luck. If you liked this video, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. It helps other people find this content so they can learn as well. And if you'd like to support me so I can keep uh, making this wonderful content for everyone, please check out my Patreon, where I'll give you early access to all the cool stuff I'm working on. All right, thunder out.